this is the last five minutes, I promise, and uh, we have a really important message to pass. Um, so we've heard a lot today, and I was actually just checking my, um, which one do I use? This is the end of the day, and still, the green one. So I was just actually checking my email, and the first time that somebody contacted me about this workshop was actually on the 7th of May last year. So today has been more than a year in the working. So I think all these people here um, deserve a big round of applause because honest, the people, you know, all the coordinators, um, the people from Arctic have been so patient. I counted more than 20 teleconferences um, and especially about five every week this last week. So every, this last month. So really and truly, I mean, we would not be here without I think, and it's really showed today, the passion that everybody has about epilepsy, which I think makes, makes it u unique. I don't know why, but we really feel for, uh, for the condition. It's more than just a job for all of us, but really want to improve what is happening and what is out there. So I think my, my job here is to wrap up and to give you some, key, at least, key messages as I saw them sitting back there at the end of the room. First of all, again, I would like to thank all the speakers. As you've seen, we really made, I mean, the program took another six months, making sure that all the projects were presented in each topic. Even just coming out with the topics was not easy. And I think we could see it was really coherent. Many people were saying that, and I think the, the speaker from the commission this morning said, you know, it was interesting how coherent everything is, despite the fact that we have different funding, um, different projects, perhaps different themes, perhaps people who were not even involved in epilepsy in the first place, but we do have a coherent message. I would really like to thank the European Commission, Anna's still here, there she is, and Stefan Hogan, who've really been on, really, they deserve a big round of applause, they really um, helped us a lot, and, uh, um, and I think they went more than above their job as, uh, she's our project officer, uh, and so she, Investors, everybody for their deliverables and all the pro manager and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the milestones and the reports every year, but honest. And tomorrow you may have heard there's going to be a workshop which they are hosting in DG Research itself. Unfortunately, space is limited, not everyone could be there, but um, this shows the importance that the Commission is giving to epilepsy and I think it's really, really important. And of course, all of you for staying here, you know, sticking, uh, sticking it uh, together with us. I'd really, however, like to thank all the patient and carers. I mean, just the numbers from the last uh, session, I think I must have counted about 50,000 patients just involved in the biobanks. So altogether, we have, I think, hundreds of thousands of patients who've been involved in our studies. And I think uh, Francesca's comment there, sitting at the back, about how important the role of the patient organizations is, is, is critical if we want to get the job done. So. These were the, what have we heard? We've heard that epilepsy is a multifactorial disease. It's really complicated. But somehow, even though the projects were also different, you know, we could see this, this message. We still we can work together. There are still so many unmet needs. We need the money, we need the time, we need the resources. And we need, as well, more young people on board. Um, all these projects started, I think the first one was Epicure. Uh, way back in 2004, so it's still just the beginning. And today is not the end, but it's still the beginning of what is going to go next. Um, you all know these, I'm going to go to repeat them, how much it costs, and unfortunately, and I always like to say this, epilepsy is not sexy enough. We don't talk about it, we need role models, and we need to persuade our patients. I know important people in my country who have epilepsy. I come from water, just small island, so it's pretty easy to know everyone. But Nobody talks about it. We don't have the role model, for example, with Michael J. Fox or for Parkinson's or, you know, um, that American football player for ALS. We do need role models. We need the persons with epilepsy out there talking about it if we want to make a difference because otherwise it's going to remain there under the radar. Um, so I think we're discussing Aslan myself. You know, this was really a unique event. We had like the, 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 the the cherry on the cake with respect to epilepsy research across Europe. So we're really, really lucky today. And it was a unique milestone as well. David started with this this morning, a unique milestone. 
And we had the mix, what was interesting as well, the transnational uh, rationality of it. So the clinical, the basic, and all the translational research in one room together and talking. And I hope you really were, learned how to network and talk. And uh, our colleague here in the biobank mentioned how important it is to talk to colleagues because your answer might be out there. It was unique. Okay, this covers 50 million, but still so much needs to be done. And again, we had over, I think, 50 countries, not only in Europe, but also overseas, all involved in this research. Um, we do hope we still have our UK partners on board. This time next year, I really hope so, so um, because they really have so much to give. We've had thousands of researchers involved and PhD students and even hundreds of papers published. We did try at one point during one of the TCs, Sarah asked us, try to get some numbers, how many papers you have, but it's, it's impossible. I can tell you for desire, I think we have over 200, if I'm not mistaken, if not more. So uh, I'm sure all together we have hundreds of papers. So yet we have the bottlenecks, and this was something which we, which was repeated all the time, the bottlenecks, the bottlenecks. Um, those were the sessions. Uh, we're delivering so much, yet so much still needs to be done. And this is what you, we want from you. We have some homework to, go, to do now when you go home tonight. Um, this morning we heard all about um, you know, the importance of collaborative project, uh, partnerships. We're really lucky we have with us representatives of the NIH here. Is Vicky still here? There she is. So, and tomorrow we're going to have colleagues as well from Japan and Australia as well. So it's really important that the unique work which is being done in Europe uh, we really collaborate, and we've heard all the time this morning how important it is to collaborate. And we've heard as well about Horizon Europe, this big magic uh, ball which nobody knows much about yet, except this, these blessed mis missions and challenges. So, what is Horizon Europe asking for? We did have some hints this morning. Uh, Dr. Berkuk said, he mentioned this open science pillar, the global challenge, the open innovation which perhaps for a scientist does not mean much. It's all just like a pie in the sky type of thing. But the reality is if we do want money for research in epilepsy, we have to understand what the commission is trying to tell us and how we can tailor make our, uh, our request for funds according to this. Um, so actually, Aslan Ma himself have been working mo a lot on this little thing you have in your pack. I hope many of you realize you have this three-pager here in your pack. I hope you didn't throw it away. Really important document. So, we've heard about the mission-oriented approach, uh, impact-focused approach to address these blessed global challenges. And that's on her last slide, some of you may have missed it, showed us this. So what we've done is we've tried to see what is next, what they call foresight. So what, how can we sort of look out of the box, in the box and look from up down and see what we're saying, but look at it with a new eyes. So what we're looking at is, we've even we had TCEs actually debating this. Our idea, this big challenge is solving the epilepsies, faster diagnosis, better treatments and of stigma. We've put in some time frames. Perhaps they're too ambitious. Perhaps they're not ambitious enough. You know, some, some data. And what we've done as well is we've put clusters. We've uh, focused, put clusters. So what we've heard this morning actually mirror a bit these clusters. The data banks we just finished with. The target like diagnostics and therapy discovery. Personalized medicines and new delivery systems. Didn't hear much about that. Um, comprehensive care, uh, the translational models for uh, diagnostics, uh, digitalization, and integration in the regulatory uh, sphere. So your homework is this. So this is basically what there is in the document, you know, the, you know, just to repeat what I've just said, you know, the, the diagnostic tools, the biomarkers, disease modifying therapy, I don't know if we're ambitious with that, and of edu course, education. So, what we need, and this is um, what we've heard, we need to share our technologies, develop common infrastructures. We've seen all the time there's this request, we can work together, and Alona mentioned how Epistop is working with Desire uh, with respect to these very rare conditions. But working outside with uh, 
uh, TBIs, uh, Alzheimer's, and European reference networks, and engaging with other European projects. So, and interacting with the regulatory environment as well. And this is being done, by the way, not in a vacuum, but it's being done with two big organizations which coordinate epilepsy efforts worldwide. So the International League Against Epilepsy and the International Bureau for Epilepsy. And um, so I'm really pleased that Martin is here, I hope. Is he still here? No? But Francesca's here. Uh, Martin was actually in Geneva yesterday. Uh, working on uh, uh, the WHO resolution, and Philip Rivren, who helps with the co-chairing co of the Epilepsy Alliance Europe. So we need to come with one voice, and we need to work together, and I think it's unique uh, with the epilepsy world, that we're all friends, even though there's an element of competition, but really all want to work together. So we need your feedback, we need your help. And what would we like you to do First of all, it's important to disseminate the results. You know, what we're today, I don't know if you've realized, but Arctic have done a big effort, and Sebastian especially back there, where is he? There he is, taking photos, streamlining us on Facebook, making sure the Twitter account, Twitter account is updated all the time. So please like it when you go home, or ask your children if you don't have Facebook yourself. <laughs> we need to learn how to be political animals as well, um, uh, because otherwise we're not going to get things done. We, know, we have to learn how to influence policy at national level, not only um, at European level. If we want to get money, we have to start from home. Learn who your national contact points are for Horizon 2020 and Horizon Europe. Um, speak to your MEPs and members of the advisory group. We heard this morning from our colleague from the Commission how important the European resolution was in 2011, how it kick-started all, all this funding. So, unfortunately, yes, we have to speak to the politicians if we, want, if, we need, if we want to get money. So, what we need you to do, please, is read this and send us your feedback by today week. Um, to myself or to, or to Asla. Uh, we really need your comments. Uh, we want the message to be one. We want happy to have, be ever, ha, happy, everyone to be happy with the message. So, and we want everybody's input, because everyone has an input to give. Um, from all of you, whether you're a coordinator, whether you're an early stage researcher, whether you're a patient representative, I think everyone has a say in all of this. And it's only in this way that we can look forward. And don't worry, you're going to hear more from us. So I'd like to thank uh, everyone and close the day. Thank our IT people and the people there filming us at the back. And thank all of you for sticking uh, to us when it's way past. Uh, what a normal conference would be. So thank you very much. You all deserve a round of applause.